Hi, I am Dr. Tiffany Rao. I uh, teach in the Department of Special Education at Cal State Fullerton. And this webinar is on the best virtual field trips for special education. Um, <clears throat> I There's so many virtual field trips right now. At the time of this recording, this is early November, 2020, uh, and schools are partially open. They are, for the most part, some schools are still closed and some schools are doing kind of a hybrid learning situation. And, but nonetheless, uh, field trips are pretty much like canceled until further notice and as they happen. But the good news is there's tons of virtual field trips available. A lot of really cool places have uh, put out a virtual field trip uh, or di different uh, field trip activities that you can take your kids on. And what's cool about that is that now you can go anywhere. You can go anywhere in the world on a virtual field trip. So uh, I just chose a few. Um, this is a, a shorter webinar, so I just chose a, a handful. Um, really, I'm gonna focus mostly on a couple of different ones and then give you some additional ideas after that. But when I was looking at these virtual field trips, if you, if you Google virtual field trips, uh, it's overwhelming because there are so many. And so I specifically uh, wanted to narrow a couple down to field trips that required no registration, free, of course, and were ready to go. Field trips that you didn't have to email and register and wait for a response, or there are some like live virtual field trips you can do, which is super cool. But I thought some teachers, you know, you teachers right now are overwhelmed and you might just want something you can do tomorrow. Like maybe you're feeling like, oh my gosh, we've been doing this distance learning for so long. I need to do something different tomorrow. And it can't have a lot of prep work involved because you're already super busy, right? So that's what I was going for with these field trips that I'm going to share with you. All right. So let's jump in. The first one, okay, the zoos have some really cool field trips. Zoos and aquariums, I would say, are like front runners as far as really cool virtual field trips go. Most of the zoos have live cams, which is really cool. So we're gonna start with, uh, or the zoo that we're gonna visit right now, I'm not gonna take you on like a whole field trip like you would with your students, but I'm just gonna show you the Smithsonian National Zoo. They have really nice activities and camera webcams and also uh, highlight footage if in case nothing's going on on the webcams. Sometimes on the live webcams, nothing's going on. They're just sleeping or they're not even in that area of the camera. But for fear, there is highlight reels that you can watch in case those animals are not there right at that moment. So what I would do as a teacher is set up an agenda, right? If you were really going to the zoo, you would probably map out where you're gonna take the kids throughout the day. And just start with you know, these animals and then go see the giraffes, et cetera, et cetera. Then we're gonna stop for lunch, right? So you can do the same thing on a virtual field trip. So I just wrote the sample agenda. They have all live cams for these particular animals. So that's what I chose. Cheetah cubs, giant pandas, naked roll, naked mole rats, which are interesting little animals, elephants and lions. And then this, this uh, Smithsonian Zoo offers uh, ready to go activities that you can have students do during the virtual field trip and afterwards. So let's start by visiting the, um, the website. So let me just switch over to that. Here we go. All right, so it's uh, starting out here with the cheetah cub cam. And I have to be honest, every time I've gone to the cheetah cub cam, because I've gone a few times as I've prepared this webinar, I keep checking back and they're never there. Uh, let's try it anyways. It just takes a few seconds. Let's see, let's see if they're there. Takes a few seconds. Oh no, it's empty again. I don't know, they're always playing, but 
like I said, they have best of kind of highlights, uh, videos and, and photos. So these are photos. You can see the little icon right here. That means those are photos. Let's go over to a video and I'll just show you a, a few seconds of one of the videos that they have that you could show to your kids. It's a few minutes long, or actually it's only 30 seconds. But this is so cute, little cheetah cub just hissing at the camera. And then they are playing with balls. So cute. All right. And they've got another video and then they have um, photos. So you could plan on, you know, looking at the photos. And then um, the way that I like to go about this is kind of borrowing a little bit from inquiry-based teaching, not like entirely purely in that way, but starting out with observing. So observing um, photos, you know, uh, taking a look at the photos, watching the videos, um, and just giving kids time to look and observe, and then asking, what do you see? Can you describe the cheetah, this cheetah cub? Can you, um, Tell me what's going on in this picture. And then what do you think they eat? What do you, where do you think they live in the world? If they didn't live in the zoo, where do you think they would live? So kind of priming them to think about those facts. Some of the kids might already know the facts, but get them thinking. Then you can go ahead and, uh, and share the facts with them. And then maybe they're going to take notes or, uh, whatever you want to do in terms of project. But like I said, if you don't have time to plan anything, uh, the Smithsonian has got you covered. I'm going to share with you that in just a moment. Yeah, let me share with that with you now, actually, the animal webcam activities. So it's right, let's see, is it up here? Oh, go to webcams. And then right here, if you go to webcams, now it shows you all the webcams that they have. These are all the live webcams. And you can also learn about other animals and look at videos and, and photos of other animals too, besides the live webcams. But here you go, animal cam educational activities. So I've already downloaded that. Let me share that with you. It is just a really great, um, you know, full color packet right here, uh, 13 pages of activities. Um, as you can see, there's like these different activities and then more resources, lots of photos that you can share, shows the uh, science standards that it covers. And it starts out with this, it's a worksheet that they could do while you're at the virtual um, field trip and the, it's I spy. So when they see what uh, they're looking for, okay, you guys are going to look for bamboo, you're going to look for a tire, you're going to look for an Asian elephant, naked roller wrap. Once you find them, then you can color the picture. So they might have this printed out at their desk and color it as they go. Um, just something else to really keep them engaged. And then for an enrichment activity, cut and sort the pictures into groups like food, water, shelter, enrichment, etc. Uh, and just more activities like that, ready to go. So I love that. I'm all about low prep, especially at times like these, right? All right. And there were also some follow-up activities. So let's keep going. The next one is the Georgia Aquarium. So like I said, you can look at a lot of different aquariums and a lot of different views, uh, zoos. I chose these two because I just really liked their website, the ease of navigation at their website. It was easy to find things and uh, they had activities ready to go. So I'm gonna show you uh, how to do it, but uh, you go to programs, then at home learning, then you choose a webcam. And again, a sample agenda. I think they even had more than just this, but I, there's a few, you could go to like more than this. Uh, you know, you could have 10 different animals that you're gonna look at, uh, depending on time and, and your students' uh, attention spans. Um, and then, like I said before, you know, give students time to observe, ask for predictions, and then you can visit the animal facts uh, 
you know, at the Smithsonian, it was like FAQs. Here, I think it's an animals page. And then you can find out uh, if their predictions were right or what the facts are. And then some follow-up activities would be, you know, writing about the animals, drawing pictures, doing more research on the animals. So let's check it out. Switch over. Here we go. Okay. So, like I said, go to programs and then at home learning. And then the webcams. So, uh, you can just go ahead and start. Uh, and then there's more videos. They have educational videos, explore animal facts. Um, so you can look at the webcams, but you can also go beyond the webcams. Let's see, usually the jellyfish are there. Let's take a look and see if we can just view some jellyfish. The jellyfish are so, so relaxing to watch. There they are. And this is live. This is live right now. The aquarium, you can usually find the animals live. See, uh, let's see if we can see what's going on here. And there we are. So you could be identifying, I think that's some type of a shark, uh, maybe a not a tiger shark, but I'd have to I'd have to brush up on uh, on the animals that are at the aquarium. Whoops. And so you could be identifying uh, what kinds of see animals that you're seeing, what kind of fish there are, and do some activities and have some good discussions. And also, I really encourage you to just let the kids watch, even without constantly discussing, asking questions. Sometimes kids just need time to enjoy and observe and process what's going on. So I would give them that time, give them the gift of that time to just watch and just observe. Okay, so that's the georgiaaquarium.org. The Smithsonian was uh, national zoo.si.edu. Uh, but of course you can just Google Smithsonian National Zoo or Georgia Aquarium. Um, here's another, this is from Scholastic. And it's not only a virtual field trip, but it's immigration stories of yesterday and today. Let me get that pulled up. Here we go. And this is so cool. And it starts out with Ellis Islands. There is a virtual field trip of Ellis Island. Uh, let's see, let me just. Yes, it is. It's a video um, that will kind of tell a story of Ellis Island and show some really cool old photographs. And I think even old video footage, if I remember. I looked at this uh, earlier. And then you can, um, it's uh, immigration stories of yesterday and today. So then you can also hear stories of immigrants today. So this can really uh, be a virtual field trip that fits very nicely into a social studies unit that you might be doing on immigration. So I wanted to just share that one with you as well. And uh, of course, it's scholastic, so there are a lot of additional activities, teacher activity guide, things that are just ready to go, educator resources, activities and resources. Really great resource uh, for a virtual field trip. And another one that I wanted to show you was a tour of George Washington's home. So it's virtualtour.mountvernon.org and it takes you inside. Just click it and then there are, you can go in, see it's really cool. You can click on these arrows and go into the different rooms and see George Washington's home. There's the old chamber. Let's see, I don't know how to get rid of this thing. There we go we can see better. And then you can click on this and listen to a story.
Oh, read a story. You read a story. Um, so little things that you can do. It's cool to see the um, the inside of us without actually having to travel there. Uh, this one didn't have that I could find um, activities like follow up activities. So this would just be a field trip if you were studying George Washington or something around that time period. It would just be a field trip and then you would come up with activities if you wanted to. So this one didn't quite meet that criteria unless I missed it. It wasn't easy to find. Okay, I think I'm back on the right share. Yep. And then one more, uh, also I, there are, you can do a virtual field trip of the Louvre and, uh, you know, places, just museums uh, all over the place. The only problem is that it's not in English. I was getting ready to include some of those places as well and show you how you can go all over the world, but they won't all be in English or be translated. Uh, so that's a little bit tricky. NASA has a bunch of space virtual field trips that are really cool, um, but it would take a little bit of work on your part to put it together and just kind of package it together into a virtual field trip. Not much, they're super cool. Um, a lot of light, a lot of cams from, um, from NASA, you know, the Mars Rover and things like that. So really cool if you wanna uh, check that out. It just didn't quite meet the criteria of what I was looking for in terms of like ready to go, you don't have to think about it much, just, you can just do it. So, oh, also I wanted to mention the Getty Museum. The Getty Museum is such a great resource. I did another webinar on the uh, lesson plans that they have available through the Getty Museum. Really, really great resource. And they are doing field trips, but their field trip required like registration and maybe scheduling, although I'm not sure. But it was just a little bit more of a step than I wanted to um, share with you here. Again, I was looking for ready to go, but that one looks like it would be simple and really fun. Okay. All right, so the last resource that I wanted to share with you uh, is instantstreetview.com. So let me let me just take a quick let's take a quick look at it. It's like Google Earth and I think it might even be connected to Google Earth. Uh, let me go over to it. but it's so cool. So you just type an address or a place and you can go there. So if you were to do this as a field trip, you could literally, you could make it like a reward field trip where kids get to choose where to go, or maybe, you know, that's a reward where one kid gets to choose where you're going to go on a field trip. It could just be like a 10 minute thing too. It wouldn't have to be that long um, or even less, like even five minutes. Like you get to choose where we're going to go for a five minute field trip You can go anywhere in the world. And it's so neat. So, um, so I'm going to just put right here Tower of London because that's one. Oh, no. Okay, there we go. That's one that was suggested. And there we are. Tower of London, you can look around and there's some people uh, walking around. Uh, so you can just really go anywhere in the world that interests you. Um, so I wanted to share that one. I had a couple of other ideas on the slides. Uh, so, oh, this could be a part of an ancestry assignment or a background assignment where you could travel to areas where students are from or have some kind of a connection to. You could visit places related to content that you're teaching, either landmarks or places depicted in books, even fictional books, if it's place, if the setting is in a real place or inspired by a real place. And then also you could ask students to submit a wish list of places that they would like to explore. And uh, like I said, choose maybe one student, uh, one per student to visit on a virtual world tour. So you could do that, you know, all at once, do a world tour and go um, everywhere that uh, the students uh, were interested in. Or you could even have a student prepare a five minute field trip to somewhere of their choice. Um, on Instant Street View and maybe gather a few facts about that place to teach about that place as well. So a lot of different things that you could do that would take very little prep work. 
All right. And that is it. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have some fun virtual field trips out there and I wish you all the best. Bye.